Hello, 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 everybody here is Dr. Wawile again talking about different topics and subjects. Remember guys that we create and design this podcast to let everybody know about Harvard University and the magazine of Harvard Medical School. You can also visit our official website which is magazine.hml.harvard.edu. You will be able to browse thousands of thousands of articles by issue and by topic. You will be asking Dr. Wawile which topics, research, community, education, care delivery, hours and achievement. The article to review today is where law and medicine meet. I have a dream job. Every day is more exciting than the last. Judy Ederchain exclaims with people enthusiasm for her work as director of the Massachusetts General Hospital Center for Law, Brain and Behavior. The center requires Ederchain to draw daily from her Harvard degrees in medicine and law as she strives to bring sound science into the courtroom. Ederchain knows that when she began her career, her path was not very usual, nor was particularly planned. With her law school experience was fascinating and mind-blowing as Ederchain began working in corporate and real estate law, she realized that something was missing. She worked, didn't have enough stories. I didn't have enough immediacy and imitates. I didn't solve personal problems, she recalls. So, either change pivot a file with plenty of problems to solve medicine. Alright guys, we continue doing the review of this article. This article has been brought by Katherine Caruso. She is a science writer at the Harvard Medical School Office of Communications and External Relations. Judith Ederchain began her psychiatric residency certain that law was in a review mirror, but then a colleague asked her to look a legal case involving medicine. The result was eye-opening and her complete at fellow G in forensic psychiatry, ultimately placing her squirrel to a path that led to her co-founding the Center 15 years ago. The goal right the divide between medicine and law and champion great science in the service of justice. The center began by responding to incorrect neuroscience in legal settings, but now actively promote acute neuroscience in that these informing areas, the aging brain, sentencing reform juvenile, and emerging adult justice and trauma and the law. In practice, this involves teaching lawyers, judges, and others in the legal system about the science of mental illness, substances, use disorder, memory, trauma, and developing an aging brain. In addition, Ederchain and her colleagues offer judges scientific expertise by feeling amicus and a friend of the court. Briefs of the brain relief topics in landmark legal cases. These have been writing briefs explaining why the science of memory makes single eyewitness identification inaccurate, how the brain of adolescents and emerging adults differ from the adult brain, how the isolation of solitary confinement has lasting neurologic effects, and how trauma affects the brain in people seeking asylum. If we are looking for justice, the law is about mental states and mental states start with the brain. Other chain says, now the team is working to expand the center influence to reach legal systems throughout the world by working with the United States to develop an international law and neuroscience executive diploma. It is also creating a digital database of amicus and legislative brief, case law, and video tutorials about neuroscience. Even at her ambitions for the center role, Ether Chain remained focused on the little things. It's knowing that we change a life that we manage 
to help an innocent person be released, prevent someone from losing the next egg, and gave a justice system the science to believe in the redemption of a young person. Those victories keep me going. All right, guys, remember you can download this beautiful article where law and medicine meet from the magazine of Harvard Medical School. This article has been wrote, remember, from Catherine Caruso. She's a science writer at Harvard Medical School Office of Communications and External Relations. See you next time. Bye-bye.